Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back. So I'm just shuffling up. I bought a bunch of new decks. Um, so I'm just shuffling up right now, getting ready to do a daily general spread. Now, um, we're going to pull a lot of cards, so we'll probably tap into a bunch of energies. But the energies that I um, am coming into this spread with have to do with the Ten of Wands. This is the divine asking the collective to drop a burden. And we've talked about this burden energy in many different ways, but the way it's coming in today is actually a lot more spiritual and energetic than it is physical. Some of you guys know you are burdened physically with certain relationships, certain responsibilities that shouldn't be, that you shouldn't be responsible for, that need to be dropped, um, burdensome cycles that need to be closed out, um, letting go of everything that doesn't serve you. This is how the Ten of Pentac the ten of Wands has been coming in for the collective. But now it's about dropping a burden, but it has to do with um, a manifestation. Some of you guys have a need. You have a need that you're trying to fulfill and you can't. I don't care what the need is. It could be financial. It could be emotional. It could be mental. It could be... Regardless, the point is, is that you are burdened with trying to make a manifestation come in. That isn't. You're burdened with trying to fulfill a need, either for yourself or for somebody else. But let's just look at it for yourself for now. Because what I'm, what I saw in the ethers is the divine asking you to let go. You guys are trying hard to make something happen. You are burdened with either how something has to play out, when it has to play out, um, it coming into you. There's this burdensome energy surrounding a manifestation and essentially the divine is asking you to release the responsibility, meaning you've tried and you can't. You're being initiated to let go and let the divine do for you what you can't do for yourself. A lot of the time we don't acknowledge what we can't do for ourselves and let go and surrender and give our burdens to the divine because of what we tell ourselves. If we can't do it, we don't deserve it. We're shit. We're garbage. We're, we say a lot of negative things to ourselves when we attempt certain things and they don't come in. It's the idea of failure. But collective, this is something you're meant to have. And it's something bigger than you which is why the divine is asking you to release the burden and let them bring something into you that you have attempted and cannot bring in for yourself. It has to do with a manifestation. If you're already in alignment collective, it's about patience and surrender. Let the divine do their part. You did what you were instructed to do. You did your part. Let the divine do the rest. Now, I don't know if this is translating because I really literally just got this message today and I've been super emotional and I don't know why. I mean, I do know why, but I just don't know why right now, like why I'm being washed with this. But either way, I, I'm i just, we'll probably tap into a bunch of other energies. Like I said, I've got tons of new decks. I even got a new Lenormand, new Oracle, um, and a new Tarot deck. So I... I just wanted to touch on that coming into this reading that you, the divine has your back and the divine wants you to surrender so you can see the magic of true wish fulfillment. Collective, you've made a lot of your wishes come true. There are a lot of things you wanted for yourself coming up or years ago that you've manifested and you are in alignment. You have to see how alignment is played out. You did you brought in wish fulfillment for yourself by dropping physical burdens, lifestyle changes, paradigm leaps, quantum leaps. Like there's been so much that you've done to make your own wishes come true, to put yourself where you want to be. But there are other things collective. So within, so without, the divine is now going to bring in wish fulfillment to you that there's no way you'd be able to bring in for yourself because you tried and it didn't work. And it, you could have tried physically, you could have tried spiritually, you could have been praying. Uh, you know, we, we've talked a lot about the prayer push. Pray until something happens. It goes back to that story that I've shared with you twice over the past couple of years. We've been on this platform and it has to do with the man pushing the rock. 
you push the rock, but you're telling yourself you have to move it. And the divine is telling you, you will not move that rock. God says, I move the rock. You practice obedience. You push against the rock and you understand why I asked you to do that. So essentially, for those of you that are new, some of you guys remember the story, and it's one of the most. This story has kept me going since I ever embarked, since I ever was exposed to it, which was at least I don't know, maybe twenty years ago now. So essentially, there's a man in his cabin. He's weary, and the divine. So one day, he's in his cabin. The divine, the light of the Lord, enters his cabin, and the man says, "I have a job for you." The divine says, God says to the man, I have a job for you. There's a rock, a massive rock outside of your cabin. I want you to push on it as hard as you can every day. So the man spent every day from sunup to sundown pushing on that rock. Problem is, is the rock wouldn't budge. So one day he returns back to his cabin. Again, the rock hasn't even budged a middle meter. And... He takes, and the adversary sees him. So devil energy, the devil sees him all weary. The devil sees him doubting what the divine told him to do. Devil energy says, yo, man, you've been pushing on that rock that whole time. You haven't even moved it a little bit, yo. Don't put in as much effort. Don't do it every day. You know, there's no point. You're wasting your time. So the next day, the man gets up and... He's pushing on the rock, but he's not giving his full force. He's still doing it, but he's not putting his all. So he returned back to his cabin that night, and the light of the Lord returns. And the divine comes in and says, What's wrong, son? And the man said, Yo, I've been pushing on this rock with all my might for how long now? And that rock hasn't budged. And the divine said, Son, you weren't meant to move the rock you were meant to push and you say you spent it in vain but look at your body look at your legs look at your arms your hands you're way stronger than you were when we first came here and tasked you this to push against the rock now we will move the rock god will move the rock so that story is really representative of what I'm trying to get across in these pre-spread messages. Collective, you have been pushing. Don't let the adversary come in and tell you that it was all in vain when you're way stronger now. You're way more intelligent. You're way more strong, not just physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. You were never meant to bring in this manifestation you were meant to be strong enough. You were meant to practice obedience. You were meant to build a bond with the divine. And that's exactly what you did. So now God is going to move this rock for you. And whatever this rock is, essentially when it's moved, it reveals a manifestation. So I hope you understand what I mean. It's not you pushing. It's not you. That is all required for self. There is something you want collective and God is going to bring it into you. And you're not going to know how it came about. You're not going to, you're going to, you're going to understand that only God could have done it. You're going to understand divine timing. You're going to understand serendipity. You're going to understand temperance energy. When the divine is, temperance energy is essentially patience. But what do you see the card? It's the angels doing something. They're asking you to be patient and understand that you co-create with them and that they're busy supporting your asks, your destined and faded paths, the destined and faded significant relationships that are meant to come into union. So you got patience. You got stronger. And now the divine's going to move this rock for you and clear this path so you can move forward in this manifestation, so you can see this manifestation, so you can finally touch this manifestation. You understand? So I'm going to move off of it because I don't think I can explain it any better than I just spent 10 minutes trying to explain it, right? But let's pray and get into these cards, okay? Um, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels, thank you for rising me up out of my bed this morning and thank you for connecting me with the collective every day. 
right now. Please allow me to communicate clearly with the collective, all the messages that are in our greatest good surrounding our material abundance, sustenance, the relationships closest to us, our personal ascension and development, and any other messages that you deem worthy at this time. Thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, guardian angels, for everything you do for me and the collective on a regular. All the healing energy, the support, the love, the guidance, and the protection. We are nothing without it, and we are nothing without you. So glory be to the Most High forever and ever and again, forever and ever. Amen. For example, so if you're trying to manifest, say, a financial, like a work opportunity, that's a reflection of all this talent, skills, and abilities you unlocked within yourself, right? The divine was getting you to really focus on the talent, skills, and the abilities part and not about the opportunity part and really purging these feelings of worthlessness because you're not getting what you want so it must mean you're worthless, right? Or maybe it just means you're not equipped yet or you're not in alignment for it yet but you're absolutely destined to have it. It's about, remember, pushing the rock, getting stronger. So some of you guys got a lot stronger with regards to your talent, skills, and abilities and got really frustrated when you couldn't understand why this opportunity wasn't coming in. Princess of Discs, why wasn't this opportunity, this career opportunity coming in for me? You felt cheated by the universe. You felt like you weren't seen or heard, that God couldn't see you and hear you, and that your work was in vain, very much like the story. The adversary was really in your ear. That's what the Seven of Swords, it's the adversary trying to poke holes in your faith and in your commitment to the divine, to God. And then all of a sudden you were brought into this heart chakra healing surrounding relationships closest to you. You're on the Patreon, you're like, fuck, this bitch is talking about relationships closest to me, all this shit. Like, I'm trying to get my fucking career opportunity. I'm trying, I want this pinnacle. The divine was getting you to be open to receiving. And you were really focused on just this pinnacle, not understanding how this pinnacle was supposed to come about. So you were burdening yourself with how this manifestation and this opportunity came about. So this is past, this is pushing against the rock and then like, like this, this here, it was, you were in alignment, but you assumed that if you were in alignment, it was supposed to happen right away. Again, I tell you guys about needing to really release time. Either way. You're focusing on these relationships closest to you. You're being asked to be open to receive. All you're really trying to focus on is this opportunity. And this opportunity actually comes in from a significant relationship that you're being asked to be open to and to have the ability to be able to cultivate and cultivate the relationship. Only for this relationship to somehow facilitate through the butterfly effect, you receiving this pentacle. Surrender. Just do practice obedience. We've, for years, we've been working on this communication and this relationship with the divine. It's for a reason. It's to manifest. It's to co-create. It's to inherit legacy. It's to build legacy. There's all these reasons. And this is one of them collective. You're not going to get the manifestation the way you think or the way you're insisting it has to happen. Some of you guys, if it's regarding dating, you're pimping yourself out online. You're pimping yourself out online, going on dates. It's becoming like a second job. You are really frustrated and you're not even going to find your fucking divine partner like that. You find this motherfucker at a gas station or a fucking Tim Hortons or at a friend's barbecue. Do you understand what I'm saying? So whatever you're feeling burdened by, whatever you're really yearning for, it's a need. It's it, This manifestation heals and, and fills a need that you have, that you've identified and love yourself enough to say, I need this in my life. I want this and I need this in my life and I deserve it. Why can't I bring it in? It's like you felt like the universe was telling you you didn't deserve it and that wasn't the case. The universe was saying, drop the burden so we can bring this in. You've offered wish fulfillment to yourself. You've gotten more skilled. Nine of Cups energy. 
You went and unlocked your talent, skills, and abilities. You healed yourself. You love yourself enough to live out wish fulfillment and be wish fulfillment for you. Now, so within, so without, the universe is going to match that and mirror that and bring in wish fulfillment. And you're at, when this comes in, you're going to learn a very, very, you're going to understand a very valuable thing, which, is, which essentially is that you co-create with the universe and you have faith in the, and respect in temperance energy. Number 14, if you've been seeing 14 a lot, that could be temperance energy. If you're pulling temperance energy a lot, it's, it's not just, I'm going to be patient it's, I understand why I am being patient. That's why the three of wands is the minor to temperance energy. That's why three of wands speaks of waiting for your ships to come in. It's the minor energy of patience. But really, we already talked about it. Three of wands isn't waiting. It's making the preparations. You pushed against the rock. You made the preparations. Do you understand? But the fact of the matter is, is that boat comes in when that boat comes in, whether you're prepared or not, but your job is to be prepared. No different than if you are steering the boat and you're the boat entering somebody's dock, you can be there, but if they're not ready to receive you and they haven't made the preparations to prepare that dock to receive you, you are not go, you're not entering into somebody's life. You're not moving forward. This is kind of complicated, or at least that's how I'm processing it right now, because it's something that we're going to be breaking out through this month. Absolutely. Temperance energy and understanding why we give that respect to the divine and what you're doing with them. You're about to see it. And I'm telling you right now, when this princess of pentacles comes in, whether it's a, a, a divine partner, whether it's a, a career opportunity, I don't give a shit. You're going to understand that you didn't, couldn't do this alone, that this was the universe responding to you, that the universe heard you when you were crying, thinking the universe didn't hear you and your cries and your wants and that your needs would never be fulfilled and that you weren't heard by the divine. Only to find out you actually forget heard. You guys co-create together and brought this manifestation in. We have to respect what happens externally. The divine, the 4D. We talk about the 3D and the, and the 5D, but the 4D is where our, our, our ancestors, many of our ancestors, but especially the divine and devil energy function and interact with earth, with the 3D. They can't break in to the 3D without us. That's why I told you guys, you make a choice. But devil energy and angelic energy is trying to do the exact same thing. Manifest their energy right here on earth through who? Us. The divine wants, understands that you have a need. Why? Because your fucking ancestors have probably had this need and have been trying to manifest, manifest this. That's why ancestry and really remembering, remembering the Kashic records is really important because then you'll understand why there's so much energy built up, why there's such a deep fucking need because you've had this need for lifetimes. Your ancestors, your family have had this need. It's a win your light spreads like wildfire. This love spreads like wildfire. The success you bring in, inspire the inspiration of that spreads like wildfire. You inspire people to not give up, to chase their dreams because of this manifestation you bring in. Your partner, your divine partner, the love you cultivate, the commitment you make is going to get people to come out of karmic situations because they go, if they can have it, I can too. And you're damn right. You do the work and you get alignment and you believe you can have it too. Like I told you guys, there's not a single download that I get that isn't in the ethers. I told you, what's judgment energy? Judgment energy is a bunch of angels on fucking horns. What do you think they're saying in those horns? They're not just sounding horns. And if they do sound it, it's to it's to warn the, the people, three of wands, at the port that the bo boats are coming. It's a final warning before those ships come in to be in alignment and be prepared. Judgment energy is also, think of like a ref calling a foul. Judgment, that's also judgment energy too. But what I believe when I look at the, the, that card and I see the angels, it looks like one of those megaphones. They're screaming these downloads out in the ethers to any one of us fools that will be fucking meditate long enough to listen. I already told you guys, if messages resonate, it's because that information is already inside of you. I just supported you as a high priestess and a server of the mission. I just instigated that. It's like poking you, triggering, poking you. 
We always refer to triggering as something negative, but essentially triggering is something resonating with somebody and them feeling a way, good, bad, and different, whatever about it. Triggering is bringing an awareness to somebody that they didn't have, a conscious awareness, but in their subconscious, they know that that applies to them and that that's the truth. I don't know why I went on this long rant. I've got to pee and my brain starts to malfunction when I pee. I start talking faster and louder. But anyway, I think I got the point across. I hope so because we spent 20 minutes, but it's just such a massive energy. The divine really, really was trying to get me to see that because there was all this gratitude energy and it was God asking. It was God, God trying to make me aware of the gratitude I need to have for the divine. And it's the temperance energy. It's all the work that they do to facilitate the love and the light that we usher into our lives. They're working so hard. I don't see angels as wearing these flowy little gowns and their little feathers walking around. They're warriors. They're doers. They're overseers. They are... We really are nothing without them. <laughs> Anyways. Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors and guardian angels, the king of swords trapped in your mind. Okay. Remember I was talking about that 888 portal? It looks like you're waiting for somebody to come through it with you. For somebody, for some of you, you, don't, you do not wait. You're not waiting in this portal. You go through it. Some of you are initiated this year to go through this 8-8 portal alone and really initiate yourself and commit to this journey of self-love and union of self so that the next time you go through this portal and the next time and the next time, you're just experiencing more union energy, more union energy, more union energy. I feel like this portal really reflects this locking in of certain lessons that need to be obtained that you are going to go through, but you're locking in with somebody else to go through it with them. But many of these lessons, all of them start independently first. Nine of cups, all nine speak of the individual. Doesn't include anybody else. If it's stressed, it's your stress. You're stressing yourself out. You tell yourself you're stressed and what you should be stressed over. If it's the nine of pentacles, it speaks of your independence. Nobody else contributes to it. You are... You are solely responsible for your financial and material abundance and comfort. And you're happy with that. You're pleased. You feel like you're equipped enough to embark. The nine of wands, that's you as the wounded warrior. You're feeling wounded. You're feeling burdened. You're being asked to not give up. You're feeling like giving up. And then the nine of cups, wish fulfillment. You make yourself happy. You had all of these needs collective. And you looked within and you did what was required. You didn't wait around for somebody to come and fulfill these needs for you. You did it for yourself. But there's a need. There is a fucking need that you can't do for yourself and it's bothering you because you've came to this point of independence where you've learned you can make your wishes come true. You can manifest. You can bring shit to you. Why can't I bring this in? This is what I'm hearing in the ethers. Because you're not fucking meant to. You were just meant to be in alignment with it. You get me? You were just meant to have faith in the divine. That's when you get to the tens. Independent nine. Independent coexistence. Tens. That's why tens can speak of coming out of existence with somebody. But anyways... Looks like this door, this is a door to union because after the nine of cups comes to the ten of cups. This is a door of union. Some of you are considering coming in because with the king of swords and the seven of swords, you add them together, that's the eight of swords. That's an illusion. You're trapped in your mind about why it's not safe to go through this door. You're juggling whether or not you should commit to go through this path to union. This is you standing at the port, fucking prepared, being like, I'm fucking ready. Divine sounds those horns saying that the ships are coming in. There's you standing at the port. 
like you have it looking like a whole fucking bat mitzvah like you have it set up it's ready everything's good to go the ropes are ready people there's champagne like you guys are so fucking ready you're in alignment that's that message is definitely for those of you that are kind of devil energy is telling you that it's de devil energy knows you're in alignment and is trying to get you out of alignment it's trying to convince you to walk away from the port come on come have a drink or come on let's go over there don't do that you already heard the angels sound the horns that these ships are coming just stay in alignment this is achieving alignment then learning the the how to balance and maintain alignment so it's not just some fleeting experience oh i was in alignment now i'm out oh i'm back in alignment again okay i'm going learning because we never just stay in alignment <laughs> i mean if you do then you're typically going through that stagnant energy where you were once aligned for something but how do you grow and ascend if you're not coming out of alignment only to work to become in alignment with higher vibrations you know what I mean? But this is right now, this is about staying in alignment for something specifically that you asked for and are trying to manifest and not lose faith. And this is you standing there with pure faith that the divine is going to support this manifestation. Come in. I did everything I could. I'm feeling good. I'm super abundant. Look at the wish fulfillment that I brought in for myself. Of course, the divine's going to mirror this back to me because this is how it works. So maintaining the energetic vibration and to stay in alignment, it's just and maintaining this high vibration of love of self and, and this acknowledgement of personal achievements. Because if you really acknowledge that you've already brought wish fulfillment into you in so many ways, you really understand that this is meant for the divine to do. Or else you would have been downloaded to do it just like all the other great things that you've brought into yourself at, at, at your own hand. You brought manifestations in by your own hands. But then there's manifestations that we just need to be in alignment with to receive and open to receive. Remember, our emperor energy takes action and makes our wishes come true. Feminine energy cultivates and receives. Receives and then cultivates the wish fulfillment that comes into her or him. And then make sure to cultivate it and maximize on it and appreciate it and watch it grow and thrive here in the 3D. So within, so without is this wish fulfillment energy here. Okay. Um, then we've got the tower. What's this tower about? Oh, wow, 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 wow. I got to pee. I got to pee. I got to pee. Look at the nine of swords. You're fucking stressed. You're stressed over some shit collective. It could be about getting a divorce. You could feel like somebody's trying to take you, your money from you. Um, it looks like somebody's trying to negotiate a debate. Like they're trying to, um, they're doing, a, what's it called? Mediation, some kind of mediation here. Somebody's afraid that someone's going to take some take something away from them or take something down or this is all stress but it's yourself this is you remember the card before the nine of swords is the eight of swords and we had it here we had it here this is the eight of swords when you add them together the king of swords and the seven of swords this is in your mind look at all the worms and shit in your mind there's interference and it's causing fear of the worst case, this is some of you guys just thinking about the worst case scenario. The problem is, is if you're focused on the worst case scenario, you're going to cheat yourself out of wish fulfillment because you're not going to align yourself to wish fulfillment. You're aligning yourself to disappointment. You're aligning yourself to the karmic path that you've already been on. Fear, doubt and like fear and doubt and shit is pretty much like just wishing for the worst case scenario. It's like, this is very spiritual and this is very personal to every one of you directly with God. So I'm doing the best I can to kind of touch on this energy. It's very collective to this path, but it's going to play out obviously very differently and unique for all of you guys. But this is very personal spiritually. So you'd really have to have a connection with the divine to understand what the fuck I'm saying about this needing to surrender and let go. This is even just surrendering to let go. Like some of you guys have, you're realizing you have a lot of commitment issues. 
you thought it would be no problem to commit, but now here you are juggling it around of two minds. It's fear that's getting you. This is what's getting you to indecisive, to not know what to do. It's fear of the worst case scenario. It's fear of being hurt and stabbed in the back like you have so many other times. But just because this person has a sword doesn't mean they plan to stab you in the back. They don't see the difference. This person has their sword and only one right in front of them. It's visible. There's vulnerability. There's clarity. There's transparency. There's honesty here. This person has their swords behind their back. So this is somebody who's very open and honest, even if it's cold, even if it's something you don't want to hear, but it makes it feel safe. Then when you add the nine of swords and the king of swords, that equals the 10 of swords. Somebody feels blindsided by somebody bringing a relationship to an end. Somebody could feel like they had planned it all along, that somebody's reflecting back and being like, did they plan to leave me when they said this or when they did this or when we were planning this? Somebody feels really slighted by that, somebody leaving, deciding to leave them. Somebody feels like somebody took an opportunity away from them. Somebody feels really angry and jealous, feels like something should be theirs. It could be a person, it could be an opportunity, it could be some kind of money, support. Somebody feels like that should have been mine. How did she get it or how did he get it? Um, there's so many messages because I text myself little downloads and stuff like that. There's so many. The Ace of Swords. What's this Ace of Swords about? There's a lot of sword energy. The Queen of Discs. This is about, wow. This, somebody wants this from the queen. Do you see? Do you see this? This is a request. Somebody could be requesting something from you. So here's the queen sitting here with her pentacle, but here she is standing up, looking like she's going to offer it. Page of uh, Princess of Disc is the page of, of pentacles. Offer it. This is you knowing the truth. This is about committing. This is about indecision of whether or not you're going to offer your pentacle to somebody. Sometimes we can get really obsessed about what people offer us. But the fact of the matter is, is you need to be consciously aware of your ability to be able to offer what it is that you're asking. So if it's commitment, you want somebody to commit to you, you need to be really clear about your abilities and availability to commit. Because there's a ton of energy about unavailability and I'm going to do a love reading and it's going to be about the masculines because collectively masculines are really struggling. Masculines are being worn. There are ma many of you guys, so I'm just going to touch on this here. To my divine masculines, many of you guys are going to manifest the love that it is that you seek, but you're not going to be available for it. And you're going to feel it's that three of wands energy, the preparations, because you have faith that those ships are going to come in and bring you what you want. Some of you guys, it, it, whether male or female, it's the divine masculine energy that didn't that didn't make the preparations and had the lack of faith about about the divine feminine being on that boat and essentially the divine feminine comes in and the masculine isn't available and like i said this could play out whether male or female we all have both energies within us so you need to be really looking at your availability collective you want these things, but are you available for them? Because a bunch of you guys are going to bring in manifestations and you're not available. That's why the divine is asking you to be patient. Some of you guys, it's surrounding love and you're considering giving your cup or giving. It's not that you're giving your cup away. You are considering giving access to somebody, giving somebody a little access to your cup. The problem is if they have access to your cup, you now vibrate as unavailable for whatever is coming in. That was always destined and fated to come in. Because you've been asking for it, you've been manifesting it, but were you available for it, collective? That's going to be the question. Some of you are. Some of you aren't. That's how you make preparations. You become available for what it is that you want. I know my eyes are tearing up. I was crying. I did cry a little bit earlier when I was talking about the divine, but now my, t my eyes are just tearing up because I've got to pee really bad. Um, but there's so much more to do, talk about. I'm just going to pull some of it from this new Lenormand. There's two decks we still haven't even used. The cross, this speaks of faith. <laughs> Thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors. This is what this whole message is about, having fucking faith. <laughs> and what, and what does that person have in the background in their hand? It's a fucking cup. It also looks like hermit Virgo energy. Anyways, that's the divine just thank you, Father God, because I wasn't sure if I was getting the energy across, but they validated what I already said. So this is good. 
Thank you. Because I was really on that. The Gentleman, number 28. That's Divine Masculine in Lenormand. And then the Rods. This speaks of arguments, confrontations, communications. Um, it can speak of short communication too. We're going to read the Rods. The basic meaning of this card is dispute, communication, discussions, arguments, conversations, negotiations, or interference. It may also point to your own mistake. The dispute card, uh, par, the dispute card par excellence. We should relearn our communication skills without being caught up in emotional drama. Getting simply taken away by high-pitched emotions ends up in disaster. Listening to learn. Topic, self-punishment. Um, humiliating acts, negotiations are necessary, speak your mind, taking things as they come, just keep, keep quiet, listen to others, for solving conflicts and discord, the quarant has to have the required will and strength to do so, dispute can be settled only through talking and speaking with each other, not by silence, not even by whatsapp, Resolve problems that are unspoken, always lead into aggression and violence, not even um, unresolved aggression, um, unresolved problems that are unspoken always lead into aggression and violence. Thus, the card gets a completely new meaning in the present time, moving away from digital media to bring personal and private conversations back to the ground floor because text messages and short bits of information, all information alone do not provide the background and the picture of the situation as a whole. Okay, I'm sorry guys, I'm tearing up. I've got to pee so badly. That's the spread. I love you. We'll carry on. And until the next time I see you, keep letting your inner angels live. Bye. <laughs>